Greetings folks, Joseph Kursky here with you now and what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at doing something with a di digital elevation model or a DEM sometimes referred to as a digital terrain model that's really quite powerful and that is to create contours from that elevation model so for example I've got a digital elevation model right here I just made a shaded relief out of it as well but what if I want the actual contours well again the old way of kind of looking through uh, Arc Toolbox is still around you can inside ArcGIS look for something that will let you make a contour vector file. Contours are going to be vector files, but you don't have to do that. You can go over here to the search box, which is actually under Windows Search. So in this search box, I'm going to look for something about contour. So if I do that, I'm looking at Spatial Analyst Contour. Wonderful. So in the contour command, what we can do is we can give it an input layer. The input layer is going to have okay what do you want to actually make contours out of now think outside the box for a moment it doesn't have to be elevation data it can be pH of soils it can be pH of water water samples that you have collected in local ponds and streams it can be trash the frequency of trash it could be age of structures it could be a uh, rainfall a, a variety of different things so you can create contours and if you create contours for those other kinds of layers, they're typically called iso heights in the case of temperature or iso lines more generically. In other words, lines of equal value. In this case, we're doing elevation, kind of a traditional contour uh, or iso lines, which is actually called a contour. So our input raster in this case is a DEM, or digital elevation model. Pay close attention to what the what you're doing for the input raster. Make sure that you're not making contours out of the shaded relief, for example. It's got to be the original elevation model. And notice that my folder for my output has been set in my environment variables, which is under geoprocessing environments. And that way, all of my data that, that I create is going into that folder. So I don't have to worry about it being scattered all over my computer. So my output notice it's polyline it's going to be a vector file not a raster file because I truly want vectors I want contour lines I'm going to call it contour 1 now the contour interval I'm going to make 5 because I'm looking at my DEM on the left side there and I see that I've got a low of 302 and a high of 419 meters very important to know what your elevation or your your Z right your your elevation in this case uh, are what are your units in this case it's in meters and my interval is going to be five meters. I'm going to leave the base contour and the Z factor alone, and that's and I'm going to say OK there. So while it's crunching away, let me show you something else that's really powerful. There's my contour lines. One of the things that I really like to do is I can look at the results. If I go under geoprocessing, I, I see results here. Here's my current session. I've just made a contour, and here's my um, or a contour layer. Here's all the inputs and so on. As you can see here, this is the, the results that I get. So it's, it's really nice to be able to see what happened, especially if you get an error message. You can go back into results and see what, what happened and, and, and figure out why. So that's the results pane. Okay, cool. Now I've got a contour line vector file. Okay. In this case, let's go to data and we're going to look at properties. In this case, let's look at the source of my data. It's a shape file. I could have made a feature class inside a geodatabase. In this case, I chose to make it a, a shape file. It's got it's received the same projection as my data frame, which is in my case NAD83 UTM zone 14N. So let's just take a look at that uh, that contour t attribute table. You can see here in the attribute table. Let's raise it up a little bit. That my low. Uh, is 325 then I've got uh, a bunch of others that look like a 5 meter spacing now I can sort this right so I got 305, 310s, 315s if I scroll on down because I said I want a 5 meter interval so now let's go ahead and zoom in on this and there's my there's my contours on top of my shaded relief so I can look at any one of these and say oh okay that um, contour is 340, 340 meters, okay? And so I can also symbolize these contours, right? So for example, if I had symbolized it in brown, you know, that's that tells me something. I can also label these things and I can symbolize them with like an index contour, so every fifth line gets some sort of thicker line or something like that. So here, that's what I've done on this particular one and I've also labeled it. Now these labels are not the greatest of labels. They're just showing you that you can actually create labels uh, how do I do that? Well, first of all, let me show you how I symbolize them differently. In this case, you can see that 
in the legend here, I've got every fifth one, two, three, four, five. Every fifth is just a thicker line. So I've made unique values, as you can see. Um, let's go to properties here, go to symbology. It's uh, unique values, but every fifth one I made thicker. That's all. And then on the labels, let's take a look at that. On the symbol for the labels, I've got this. Let's go ahead and edit symbol so you can see what I did. I did a text symbol, and I also have advanced text and background. Let's take a look at that. So I've got a balloon callout. In this case, I've got them right on the contours themselves so you don't see that leader line. But there's other things you can do. You can mask these contour uh, labels and so on and so forth. But the point is, is that you've got now the labels and you can symbolize these contours differently. And the most important thing, of course, is that you can actually quickly create contours or ISO lines from a digital elevation model in my case or any sort of raster grid. Thanks.